Welcome to another invigorating episode of Empowering Introductory Algebra. Hi, I'm Bob Young, Assistant Professor of Mathematics at Bavard Community College. With the help of the WBCC TV crew, we have developed this series to assist you to gain an understanding of introductory algebra leading to those college level courses. We will bring you main ideas of key algebra concepts, tons of examples, great graphics, and study tips to help you to become the best mathematics students possible. Let's continue our adventure. Now, in the last episode, we were discussing solving those rational equations, so let's go to the graphic here just to um, make sure that you got that down in your organized math folders that we're hoping you keep throughout these um, lessons. And we found to solve a formula for a given variable, the five steps, which I'll just run through quickly again. One, always know what you're after, know what you're trying to solve for. Identify the variable you want to get by itself. Two, multiply both sides of the equation to clear fractions if you have them, if necessary. And since we're discussing rational equations, you most likely will have some formulas with the fractions. Three, get all terms with the variable to be solved for on one side of the equation and all other terms on the other side. And step four, look to multiply to remove parentheses or factor out a common variable. And if you remember in that last episode, we did have one that we had to factor in order to solve. And step five, solve for that variable in question. So let's look at some more examples here and we will find that we have formulas involving rational equations. In this case, we have a divided by p equals 1 plus r, and we want to solve this for a. So in order to do that, we need to multiply the equation through by the common denominator, which in this case is the only denominator of p. So we will go ahead and multiply everything through by p. So p over 1 times a over p would be this side here, distributing the p through. And you can see the p's will cancel out, leaving us with a here, equals over here p times 1 plus r. All right. And now we can leave that answer p times 1 plus r this way. Now remember, we talked about this in the last episode, that this is not only used in math using formulas like this, but in a lot of your science classes. So there might be a case where you know what r and p are, or maybe you don't, but which one you'll plug in for. It may be easier to plug in in this form, or it may be easier to distribute here and get p plus p times r. All right. So, you know, sometimes in science, depending on how the problem's worded, this will work. These two are the same. We know from our friend the distributive property. So that one kind of fell right into our lap just by multiplying through by the common denominator. So life is good. All right. Let's look at one more here that looks a little bit more formidable. We have B equals A times T minus H all divided by T. And we want to solve for t here. Hmm. So again, we want to get rid of those fractions by multiplying through by the common denominator, which in this case, again, is the only denominator, t. So when I multiply by t, I get b times t equals what happens over here? You know what? The old chop, chop, the t's go out. And we're left with a times t subtract h. Now, this is one similar to the last episode. We're after t, but we have t's on opposite sides of the equal sign. See, so don't just go dividing by b here to get t because you have more than one t. Be careful there. That's a key point. All right, so what we're going to do is to get all these t's together on one side by subtracting the a times t from both sides. So let's show that step here because you know on the BCC network we spell this out for you as best we can. So we end up with b times t subtract a times t equals what over here? h. Now, don't forget something on that h. I left something hanging. A lot of students make this mistake. What kind of minus? There's a minus h. That's a, that's a negative. Same thing, minus h. Be careful. Now, 
these aren't like terms, Young. I can't put them together, but I can factor out, since I see T's in common here, I'm after T, take out that common T, and that will leave us with B minus A equals the minus H. All right, so to get T by itself, to take out multiplication, attack with division. So you can divide both sides by the B minus A. Okay, so T then would equal a negative H divided by B minus A, but again in science class, you may not like that. It has a lot of negatives in it and stuff, doesn't it? The H is negative, you have to subtract the A. So you might see the same answer in certain algebra books look like this. They might write it as T equals H over A minus B. These two answers are the same. Now, Young, how did you do that? How did this fraction become this fraction? Well, in order to take that negative off the H, you know what I had to multiply by to get the H there? I had to multiply by a negative one. And since these are fractions, whatever you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. And not only did I multiply the negative one through the bottom, which changed the signs, then I went ahead and I used my commutative property and rewrote the order. See, so I think I would rather have this than what we ended up with over here. I think this has less minus signs, would be easier to plug numbers in for and get. All right, so that, be careful on how you write things in algebra. You know, there's sometimes more than one correct way to write the same thing. I don't want you to get out there and get this answer and look in the back of a book or something and see that and say, man, I must have did something wrong. Sometimes they'll just multiply to get, take out some negatives in there. So a little bit of caution to the wind there.